when I started peace activism, it was mainly working with young child soldiers, little boys who had been given guns, and eventually I found myself working with women who believed that we had a lot of capacity to make change. For us, it had been 14 years into war. Women were the primary victims. And so really just speaking the right language was what we needed to mobilize the number of women we, we, we needed. We went first to the church, spoke the language of the Bible and women in the Bible who had done great things to transform their communities. We went to the mosques, we went to the market stalls, we went into communities and challenged women. You have a stick in the politics of this country. You have a stick in creating change. And so at least there was that recognition that we have a role to play. We're able to pressure both the warring parties and the government to go to the peace table at the end of the day, pressure them to sign a peace agreement. So every morning they woke up, they saw us, even the warlords that were in the butchers, um, in the forest fighting, we were able to get some of the women to meet with a delegate, delegation of them when they went to meetings. So I, I think commitment, persistence, and really just having a focus on your action and what you hope to achieve is something that people cannot ignore. They can try to ignore it at first, but it's not possible to ignore it all of the time. What has happened to the Liberian women was that they had come out, they've worked, peace had come, and there was the political dynamics that needed to be addressed, and they just stepped into it. And that has been the way they've been going. So that we were able to elect the first female president of Africa was not magic. It had nothing to do with her political strategy. It had to do with the wave of change that had come in that country, and she was just there at the right time. One of the things that our socialization in patriarchy does to us is to let us feel like we have no power, you know? And so a lot of women in communities sit back and just watch because they've been socialized to believe that you do not have any power. But working with these women over the years really brought them to the place to where they was like, well, I'm powerful. I do not need to be educated. I do not need to be at this particular place. I do not need to have a government job to feel a sense of power. I have power in that I'm alive and I'm able to do actions to transform my community. My role is to also give people hope that things can get better, but not just better by itself if we all put our hands together and make the change that we hope to see. It's not that I'm fearless is that I'd never allow my fear to stop me. And I think each and every one of us, if we decide that we're not going to allow the way we feel or how afraid we are to stop us, we will never be stopped. I have six wonderful children, and even with six children, I still look very good. I, I don't look like someone who's stressed with children from the ages of 22 to six years old. Um, I, I think also my faith, my faith in God is a key part of how I'm able to have a positive outlook on life. I don't want my legacy to end with the Nobel Peace Prize. I'm 43. I want my legacy to be that she won the prize but continued to do all of these things and was able to achieve all of these things even after the price. That's what I want the legacy to be, and that's what I'm working on. One step at a time, one individual at a time, one project at a time, and before you know it, all of the tiny changes coming together make a big change in the world.